Good morning. Welcome to our online service uh, for today, Sunday, the 25th of October 2020. Uh, this is the last Sunday after Trinity in the lectionary. So let's begin with our opening sentences. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now in a moment, Duncan will give us our reading for today from Hebrews chapter 12. And then John will speak to us from the passage. But first we have a song from our musicians. This morning comes from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 7. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who can endure such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? And it says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. 
because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, and it's good to be with you again. Now, as a keen cyclist um, a lot of decades ago, I enjoy watching the highlights of the Tour de France and the tours of Spain and Italy. Sometimes someone makes a break about 30 kilometres away from the finish line and he puts his total strength and effort into winning the stage. And you can see just how much he is suffering by the expression on his face. He wins the stage and his pain disappears in the joy and glory of winning. The crowds watching are cheering and there's a lot of congratulations. Now this is of course true of all athletes as their hard work in training pays off. Our reading from Hebrews draws on aspects of the Christian pilgrimage as a long distance race. Verse one, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that it so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So who are this cloud of witnesses? Well, the writer of Hebrews, and we're not sure who that is, looks back at the forefathers of Israel from Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Joseph, Moses and Rahab. And he then goes on to say that he hasn't actually got any more time to mention all the other people who are named in the Old Testament, who persevered and struggled, those who were tortured and flogged and imprisoned for their faith in God. All these people were commended for their faith, but they didn't receive what they had been promised. So what had been promised throughout the Old Testament? The promise was of the Messiah. And now the author of Hebrews is writing about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who was the one promised throughout the Old Testament and so now everyone was to believe in him as the source of God's salvation for the whole world. But many thought he was going to overcome the Roman occupiers and put Israel back where they thought they should be. He turned out to be a gentle man, not a warrior, a healer, not a disturber of the Romans. He was prepared to die an awful death on the cross rather than compromise his life and his teaching. So the author of Hebrews then goes on in verse 2 to suggest the response from the recipients of this letter is to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Do you sometimes feel that you're being hindered in your full and loving relationship with Jesus as your Saviour and Lord? There are many things of course that might hinder us but perhaps not being a fully active committed member of our local church may be one of them. A reluctance to read God's Word in the Bible on a daily basis. A rather intermittent prayer life. Now, the other hindrance, of course, is our sin. And this is always a difficult topic to discuss in the context of our Christian pilgrimage. But if we just think about the past week and the things that we would bring before God asking for his forgiveness, then these are the things that hinder us, that cling to us, that obstruct our progress. It's a bit like us cutting across another cyclist in a race and knocking him off his bike. It's unfair, it's illegal, and it impedes us too because we will be penalised for our behaviour. The author's next 
guidance that we're given is to persevere. Let's run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Now, our sermon series over the past few weeks has been about Christ likeness. The most important thing and the title for this sermon is verse two. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Now, I suppose really that Christians shouldn't need reminding about this guidance. Jesus wrote the tenets of faith that we repeat on a regular basis in our communion services, in the creed. But it wasn't, of course, him that wrote them down on paper, but it was Jesus who was and is the author of the way of life that he lived and that he wants us to follow. His example in our daily lives. And we need to remind ourselves on a regular basis of what Jesus went through on our behalf to save us from our sin by dying on the cross, tortured, bleeding and in agony. And the other part of verse 2, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. See, Jesus was also the perfecter of our faith, just as he was a, the author. And he brings our faith to a triumphant completion. Our moral integrity is essential, but that cannot bring our faith to completion. Our devoted service is valuable, but that cannot perfect our faith. Our spiritual experiences can be inspiring and illuminating, but Jesus is faith's only consummator. We can rely on Jesus because he ran the greatest life race to its finish, and we come to fullness of life in him alone. Life can become very weary, especially in the restrictions that we're facing due to the virus. But we must keep going, remembering who blazed the trail for us. In verse 3, verse 3 says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Well, the author of Hebrews then goes on to suggest that Christian suffering is God's discipline. And that's in verses four to seven. And I'll read that passage again. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? Well, we read of the terrible things that are happening to our Christian brothers and sisters in many parts of the world. And Jesus warned his disciple in our gospel reading about what they could expect as part of their suffering. But he also promised that the spirit of your father would be with them. Now, in this country, we don't get a lot of physical attacks on Christians, but there is plenty of opposition, plenty of false accusations, plenty of abuse and unfairness. And the author reminds us in verse four, that in our struggle against sin, we haven't resisted to the point of shedding our blood, as Jesus did. Well, I think that if we're being honest, we probably haven't even broken out in a sweat. So what is this Christian uh, suffering that we can expect as children of our Heavenly Father? Now, many of us are parents. And I'm sure that we can look at ourselves and admit that we haven't been perfect parents all the time. Discipline may have been something that we suffered as children from um, an overzealous father. 
And of course, we may have inflicted some of these things on our own children. We may have been too harsh at times, too lax at others and uncaring some of the time. Unthoughtful or overprotective. See, what we have to realise about God's discipline is that he is the perfect parent because he is our father. And he will treat us as his children. So he will refuse to spoil us or ignore us. He will refuse to let us get away with rebellion or stupidity. He has his ways of alerting us to the fact that we should pause and think again or turn round and go in the opposite direction or get down on our knees and repent. But he's also very good at giving us things we need and leading us in the right direction by his Holy Spirit living in us. He's also the God who loves us so much that he sent Jesus into the world to save us, each and every one of us who believes in the salvation that we have in Jesus because he was prepared to die for our sins. When we look to Jesus, perhaps we need to see that we could at least break into a sweat. Amen. Good morning. For our intercessions this morning, at the end of each section, if you could say Amen, or if you're a younger person and feel like it, go Amen. So be it. So, with confidence, because of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, Christ, let's come before God's throne this morning and offer up our intercessions to him. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and that seated at the right, your right hand. Father, we just pray with confidence to know that you will hear us. You know all our needs before we say, Lord, but you like to hear us say them. Father, we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the food we eat. For our jobs, for our homes, for our families, our neighbours and our church family. We thank you for them, Lord. 
and we ask that you protect them in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for peace among the nations, that God may rid the world of violence and let people grow in justice and harmony. Father, we pray especially for areas of conflict like Azerbaijan and Armenia. We pray for um, that that conflict will be resolved and that there will be peace there. And during this time that you protect that your people, Lord, you keep them safe. We pray, Lord, for all those in public office that they may work for the common good especially our politicians like Boris Johnson and his team. For our local councillors here in Middlewich and Bailey, for Fiona Bruce, our local MP, we pray, Lord, that you give her them wisdom to know what to do in these circumstances. And any extra funding that's available, Lord, help it to be spent wisely we pray lord for all those who are in fear of losing their jobs at this time we pray for peace in that situation we pray that the right doors will open up and that the wrong doors will be shut in jesus name amen we pray for conflict in families we pray lord that you can be the peacemaker that you can come into those situations, especially in families that we know. We pray, Lord, that people will come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. You come to comfort and to buy, bind up the broken hearted. Amen. We pray for those who suffer from hunger, sickness and loneliness, that the presence of Christ may bring them health and wholeness. For the areas of the world where there's famine, where they lack clean water, we thank you for your charities that provide means to have clean waters and send food. We pray especially at this time for the shoe boxes that we've all made and put together, that they will go and be a support and help and a delight to people and children in far off lands. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, we just thank you for all the children, all the schools and all the school teachers. We thank you for the work that they've done during the last six weeks. And as we come into a time of holidays, may the teachers and those that have been working so hard have a time of rest to recuperate themselves before they go back after the half term. We pray for all the families when the children are going to be at home, that you keep them safe, Lord, that they will have good, clean tasks and entertainment during this time lord that you help them to have fun and to enjoy themselves lord pray especially for the carers and the parents lord that they will be able to undertake during this time with the extra stresses and strains that are put on them perhaps from working from home or having to take time off from their jobs in jesus name amen Father, we pray especially for families at this time of COVID that were, who were separated. Lord, I myself um, cannot have my family round and we are quite well. So how much more must it be for those who are lonely or are unable to see their families? So I pray, Lord, at this special time that you will be our friend and our family especially for those who are lonely and missing loved ones. I pray, Lord, that you will come into that situation and be a blessing to people. That they will look to you at this time and know that you are a good, good God who hears our prayers and knows all about us. In Jesus' name, Amen. 
Father, we just thank you for this time. And we can ask, Lord, that you just bless each and every one of us today. That we have a fresh anointing on our lives. To know that we are not in this situation of pestilence by ourselves. But that you are in it with us. Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord. And to trust in you in all situations in the coming week. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's finish this time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into any temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much to John, Duncan, Trish and our musicians for being part of this wonderful act of worship today. So let's close this service with a prayer of blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.